plans. Um, and then, yeah, as Owen said, happy to take questions at the end. Um, before I dive into community-led zero carbon homes, I just wanted to you know, explain two things. One, one, the beautiful backdrop behind me, uh, uh, which is um, drawn from our Moss to a Flame Art and Energy Collaboration, which is all about taking the voice of people to the climate talks in Glasgow in um, November. And please do have a look at our to learn more about that. I'm not talking about that today. So that's point one. Second, I just want to apologise for the severity of my lockdown haircut and for anyone who's got frightened animals or children. Who, um, you know, sometimes the enthusiasm of 16-year-old son, red wine and um, lockdown don't mix very well. So apologies made. I'm going to share my screen now and, and talk you through a few slides. We'll tell the story. I hope. Now, someone will wave at me and tell me that they can see the slides. Thank you very much. So, Peck Homes Community Led Zero Carbon. How was it? Firstly, a little story about Plymouth Energy Community. Um, so, our mission is about um, bringing local people together to tackle um, and find joined up solutions to the climate crisis and fuel poverty about driving ownership and influence over local energy solutions and improving confidence to engage in that tech transition that we're all on. And fundamentally, a lot of our work is about enabling people to heat and power their homes affordably. We're part of a movement of community energy organisations. This is um, the mission statement from Community Energy England, but there's a community energy movements in England, Wales, Scotland, Ireland, and um, you know, much more commonly across Northern Europe. And um, yeah, we're a part of uh, a suite of organisations that share some kind of general principles and values around um, wanting to move to an energy system where we uh, there's more dem dem democratic control and benefit. Um, where you know the revenues from um, energy generation and the tr transition are pumped back into local job creation, local community projects, which might be community transport or more, um, you know, uh, more energy efficient local homes. We're not alone in this, but we do more in Plymouth than many. Peck, in delivering its missions, currently sort of operates in two areas. Um, by these two pictures. One is around the ownership of um, assets which are part of the zero carbon transition. That is, um, so the slide on the left is our solar farm earner settle. It's a 4.1 megawatt solar farm um, and we own two megawatts of renewable energy generation um, across the city and we built that out um, through um, from the periods of 2013 to 2016. Um, and we're currently building a pipeline of new sites as well to bring more locally owned renewable generation in the city. And we own 20% of the renewable energy generation capacity in the city. So as a small charitable community enterprise, you know, we are a substantive part of the energy mix of the city. And we want to grow that further. So we own assets um, and building community led zero carbon homes, I guess, sits as part of that. Um, but equally, we provide um, a device service. We, we support people with um, the assistance they need to improve the energy efficiency of their home, to reduce their billing, and particularly target, our work is particularly targeted at the moment at those people struggling with fuel poverty and affordable warmth. But equally, we're interested in working with people that want to, um, you know, I guess, upgrade their homes because they can afford to do it and they want to be part of, you know, a lower carbon future and more and more people are making those transitions. So we own assets and we're, we're there as a long term holder of those, those community assets. Um, we'll be, um, those solar panels will be generating power for the next 20, 25 years. So we're around and um, we're a charitable organisation supporting people with the transition. Our two kind of key areas. In the last year last 12 months we supported just under 3,000 households and we saved those households over 686,000 pounds that's money that stays in Plymouth rather than going to the uh, British gas or anywhere else um, so that is good for the economy over um, 700 of those households were supported with intensive one-to-one -one support which would involve you know 
in a pre-lockdown world, um, home visits, but if not ongoing kind of um, detailed kind of video calls and face-to-face -face support via Zoom um, to support them with everything from energy bills, um, other utility bills through to support with income maximization. And our generation um, saved over 6,000 tonnes, avoided 6,000 tonnes of carbon last year. So we are having an impact, but we need to do more. So we're proud of what we did and do at PEC, um, but you know the scale um, change required as part of the climate emergency is substantive. And so we're continuing looking to, to grow and extend that impact in different ways. So one of the things that's come forward from that is this idea about proving the different ways of building um, homes and owning homes um, are possible um, and to, to demonstrate within that how those new homes, those new built homes could be affordable before carbon in the same breath. And that was a kind of challenge we set ourselves about 24 months ago. Because it is an emergency, and you know, I don't need to reiterate that. You know, it's, it's well trodden ground. We need to move way more quickly than we currently are. Um, the current approaches to building new homes uh, are uh, very lackluster in relation to you know the energy performance of those homes, um, and the government's. Um, plans to ramp up how those new build homes are improved that they're moving forward the government's currently consultate consulting on the future home standard but that won't be brought in until 2025 and even at that 2025 it's still got a long way to go before we're talking about net zero so we don't want to wait we want to we want to crack on um, we want to disrupt and do things differently because um I think being a community-led organisation means that's we, <laughs> that gives us the power that we have is to do things differently. So the context is that Plymouth is growing. This kind of uh, ear here is actually Plymouth and the surrounding areas of um, South Hams and uh, West Devon and then start more in the middle, but it is taken from the joint local plan, which sets the development context for our area through to 2034. And in that period, we are expecting um, across the area to build 26,000 new homes. And we're gonna need six over 6,000 of those to be affordable. So 71% um, of those new homes are gonna be coming into Plymouth. So homes will be built in Plymouth, whether we engage as a community or not. Um, since um, that slide was uh, produced, actually the ambition now um, within Plymouth is for us, for the city to be net zero by 2030. So those new homes, 26,000 of them, need to be brought forward in a way that doesn't emit any carbon. So we have a long way to travel from where we are now in terms of the business as usual approach to building new homes to where we need to be if we're going to be serious and credible at tackling the climate emergency. There's also a massive affordable housing need in Plymouth. You know, we're not a wealthy city um, and a lot of people struggle to get into affordable housing. So we want to help tackle that. And in the same breath, help support some of the people that we're working with on a regular basis, currently living in um, private rented accommodation where um, and, and often the quality um, of those homes is very poor, very poor building um, fabric standards, they're very leaky, they're in poor conditions. Um, and so we are regularly witnessing on a day-to-day -day basis through our energy advice teams, you know, the, the reality of how people are struggling in this country with fuel poor poverty. And we know people die in their homes because they can't afford to heat them. So here we are as a developed, you know, a modern economy um, where we are actually the dirty man or woman of Europe because we are the only country um, in Europe where people die because they are too cold in their homes. It was shocking statistics. So we want to we want to help tackle that, and it's something that mobilizes us. And again, it's 
it's an emergency, we need to move quickly. So there is a need to do things differently. So in our, in our ambitions, we want to, you know, take our values around climate, around energy, and embed that with excellent design, clean energy to build affordable homes. It's quite a simple statement, perhaps a little naive. I don't, I don't dispute it, but that's what we're setting out to do. And within that process, we want to give people from our locality the chance to choose a comfortable home with low bills, fair rent, and to, to integrate into a, I guess, a, a more sustainable lifestyle. Something that many of us aspire to. And within that, we want to, to kind of look at a more ethical and innovative management model. So Plymouth Energy Community, we're a kind of cooperative. We work on a cooperative basis. We give people, you know, in the way we run our renewable own assets, people have a one member, one vote within that entity. It's a kind of different way to, to run business and enterprise. And we want to do the same with um, in the housing space. We think there's an opportunity for community shares and local investment through community shares to um, underpin um, a case for affordable housing within this place. Um, and we think there are ways to innovatively use revenues from the renewable energy generation that could be brought forward within, uh, within our housing sites to equally kind of support community activity in that space. So that's where Plymouth Energy Community thinking was, I guess, around need and why. And we started exploring those ideas with other people that thought similarly, and we refined those ideas. Um, and that led to the creation of PEC Homes. PEC Homes is a community land trust established to do that thing that I said before about zero carbon, community-led, affordable housing. So we've established um, community pet homes as an, it's not just a project, it's an independent entity, which in the future will own and manage um, those, those uh, zero carbon homes and very likely to be an affordable housing provider at the same time. And we are in the process of running through that at our moment. I thought it might be worth just winding back and just talking a little bit more specifically about community-led housing, what community land trusts are. So I've got a video that I'm going to show you next. And I hope the wonders of Zoom will allow that to happen. So the approach of community land trust is not, not new. Um, that, that kind of model as a legal model has been around for, for, for a while. But there has been an explosion um, in uh, community land trusts um, uh, across the country, just in, the, in more, more recent years, um, with a lot of people kind of coming together, but sharing the same kind of frustrations, i.e. access to um, affordable housing in their locality. Um, and a frustration with the incumbent providers of housing in many, many respects and a, and a desire to take a little bit control of their own future. So we're exactly the same. Um, and where Peck Homes is, is just coming with that ambition, but to add an energy lens on that ambition. Um, so we want to bring forward a housing development projects that are um, innovative, that they are flagship, that they disrupt by their, their delivery, you know, their, their very nature of their delivery disrupts the status quo. We want them to be case studies for how houses can be delivered and in a net zero kind of world in an affordable manner. And it is that kind of desire to, to prove um, the art of the possible that is driving us forward, as much it is as it is to get a few new houses built. It's really important for us that we do this in a different way. So there are ways of doing low energy buildings. I've been doing those for a long time. I'm sure you've all watched Mr. McLeod doing his grand designs and things come along together and they all get done and they all look good. And we've been doing that for a long period of time. 
and in different parts of Europe, you know, people have been doing it a bit quicker and on a greater scale than us, but nowhere has we got it to a point where this is normal process, which is where we need to get to. So our ambition is to, to, to play in that space. So to demonstrate, we need a project, we need a site. So we have one. Um, so we have a site that's owned by the city council at Kings Tamerton. Um, it's uh, um, been allocated for housing for some period of time. It has the potential to, to hold um, across the site up to about 70, 75 houses at the moment. It's a challenging site. It's been allocated for housing for quite some time. Some people say early back as the, uh, in the mid 1990s, and it hasn't been brought forward because it is um, difficult to access and a little steep. Otherwise, someone will put built houses on ages ago. So, you know, um, being, being you know, bottom of the housing pecking order as, you, uh, as a community land trust, you know, we don't get to choose, but it is a good site for us in many respects. So we have been working on this uh, for about the last uh, 18 months. We've had the site. I've been working through a process of securing some funding for, for, for that site to bring forward um, community-led net zero homes in that space. Um, we had a collaboration with a, um, a local SME developer that was bringing forward ha passive house ha homes in, on this kind of, you see these, these one well, my arrow is coming across here. There was about 35 passive house homes being bring, brought forward on that section. And we were going to bring forward PECS community-led affordable net zero energy homes on this section. Um, and we're working with the planning authority and with Homes England to secure some community housing fund grants, bring that forward and to work through what you know, net zero energy homes might look like and how we could get to it. So we've made really good progress in that space. Um, and we've had um, support from Innovate UK because of the, the um, of the approach that we're taking to building these homes, which is uh, a, a um, UK first in terms of how um, we will achieve the energy performance outcomes. Um, and that is generating substantial nationwide interest from funders and from innovators and supply chain in about that. Unfortunately, the, the planning application process has had to um, be pulled because of the SME developer falling into hard times linked to COVID and things like that. So we've had to move back to the um, start of the planning application process, and we're currently hoping to submit a new planning application um, at the end of uh, March. So we're currently working through a revised master planning. It does provide us with an opportunity to potentially extend the impact of um, a kind of flagship zero carbon development across the and um, rethink it a little bit, which I think is kind of healthy for us. Um, but that's something we're working through right now. So we have a project. So we have a place where we can demonstrate. Um, we have a willing partner in the city council in terms of wanting to see this come forward. And the city council just announced this as um, their flagship zero carbon development as part of uh, the, their recent climate emergency action plan. So we welcome that support and endorsement. Uh, and we have some development funds and we have built momentum within the supply chain around the interest in, in delivering a project in this way. I've talked about the approach, and this is really important to us. I talked to uh, you earlier about people built low energy buildings for a long period of time, passive house, Briam kind of standards were around before that. There's lots of bespoke ways of getting to a, a zero carbon house, but they cost a significant premium and no one has yet come to a way which makes that kind of replicable at scale. So we've drawn inspiration and learning from the Dutch. The Dutch are sort of beautifully pragmatic in, in uh, their approach to things. And the same is the approach to how they've gone about looking at um, zero carbon housing. And they've developed, developed a, an approach called the Eni Energy Sprung. Um, energy Sprung means uh, energy leap in Dutch. Um, and they're using that in, uh, to retrofit buildings to net zero standards. Um, and um, but the approach is completely applicable to um, the new build world, and that is what we want to do here in Plymouth. Um, 
energy to boron kind of works on the basis that you know, this is a, a building on the left. Um, it's, well, it's a, it's a semi-detached and they would have been both the same. Uh, one was built, built, built in the early 1970s um, and uh, they were effectively built in a field with kind of bricks, mortar, cavities slapped together and it hasn't really changed very much um, in the, what, the preceding you know, like 50 years. Um, yeah, you might put some new windows in it. You might put, put a little a loft insulation into it or something like that. Generally, it might have got a little bit more efficient, but it hasn't got anywhere near as efficient in comparison to the cars parked in front of that house. Um, you know, that, the, the efficiency of a modern car is just off the scale in comparison to that dirty old golf parked in front of that thing. We haven't managed that transition in our domestic stock and our housing stock, and we need to do that. Um, so this is a project where um, the house has been retrofitted to a zero carbon um, standard. Um, yeah, but the same thing, and it's been coated in effectively uh, yeah, an insulation black blanket, and it's built in a PV and heat pump system into the roof. What we're going to do is replicate that approach um, in new build homes. That will require, you know, building these homes in a factory somewhere. Completely change approach. Um, and it will require us asking of the builders, the suppliers of these homes for something completely different. We will need to fundamentally change the way we buy our houses. So that's why we want to get into the place of being the buyer and to demonstrate that. So Energy Sprong um, works on the basis that these new homes will cost more to build. If we're going to build them to a net zero energy standard, that will have a, a, a price premium on it, especially when we're beginning that process. And what we need to do is recover some of the long term savings from that price uh, premium, i.e. savings on the energy bill. And be able to utilize that to leverage the additional capital that we need to build the houses. So if we can take that long term saving and then effectively use that and reduce maintenance costs to borrow some extra money and then help pay that back through that long-term saving, we've got the extra cash that we need to build these higher spec homes. And this starts to get to a point where we have a model that isn't just a grand design. It is something that can be done in Plymouth once, twice, and then several, you know, all across and be rolled out across the country. So that's what we're playing with. And this comfort plan charge that's fl flagged up here is a way that as a provider of the houses, we can take some of that kind of savings back and help that to, to raise the money that we need to build the extra developers. So the energy sprung approach is about asking for something completely new. Now, if you build a home in the standard way, at the moment, you effectively find a house, so find, find some land, and then you um, uh, uh, have a planning battle. Hopefully, not a battle, but quite often they're a battle. Um, and then you secure your, and then you do some plans. You, you kind of squeeze some homes into your, into your land. And I'm, I'm, I might be offending some house builders here, but I'm, 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 I'm taking the worst, uh, worst extreme kind of thing. And and then once you've got your planning in place and you've squeezed your homes in kind of thing, you then start thinking about, you know, what kind of tiles you're going to do and what your budget is and stuff like that. Um, and sometime down the line, you start thinking about energy. But it's quite late. And I would say too late in the process. So if we're going to have a nation of zero carbon homes, we need to be asking the zero carbon question very, very early in this process. And that's what the energy sprung approach does. It effectively asks the supply chain for a completely new product. And it asks that supply chain to guarantee the performance of that product. Now, if you build homes at the moment, and if you work in that space, there is a very well evidenced and articulation, to, a well evidenced and articulated thing called the performance gap. So as a house builder, you will need to make your design your homes to a pass a building regs part L, which is an energy part of the building regulations. Um, there is a very, very substantive difference between what homes are modelled and planned as and how they're actually built out. 
and there is no no loop back so if the home doesn't perform to uh, the the standard in terms of the energy standard of part l nobody cares it just happens so, so what we want to do is get the provider of those homes to come to the table and say yeah not only can we do that but we will guarantee you that we will do that and by doing that that helps the um, housing provider to have that comfort charge and to be able to use that, that kind of guarantee to borrow additional money to pay for these more expensive homes. So that, that, that kind of process of engaging and asking for something different is not an easy thing to do if you're an established housing provider because you're a way of doing things. It's also not an easy to do if you're quite often an established um, um, a registered social landlord because you've got a million other things to do. So we as a community led housing provider with those values loud and proud on our sleeve, it provides us an opportunity to disrupt and do something different. Energy sprung, it's also really simple. I'm not really, I'm an energy geek, but I'm not a technologist. And so what I love about this approach is it is really simple about outcomes. It focuses on making sure that we're getting a product that is net zero energy, and it keeps people warm and well in an affordable way. And the performance of these buildings is all hungs off those kind of four central tenants. So it isn't about getting wedded to one piece of technology. Oh, and we must have solar panels on it. We must have a heat pump. We must have um, this kind of sustainable tech in it. We, 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 are, we are kind of trying to be as technology agnostic as possible. What we want is homes that do that and demonstrate that. And so that's why we're using this approach. We think it's practical, pragmatic. Um, the Dutch are doing it and building thousands of these new homes um, in this way. But we need to demonstrate that in the UK housing market. And to do that, we need to create a market. You know, there's a whole supply chain associated with building homes of different widgets and parts from builders and roofing kit and windows and doors and heat pumps and solar panels and things like that. We need to help those people come together to answer our demand. So some of the work we've been doing recently with the support from Innovate UK has been exactly that. Looking at the supply chain as they've been saying, we're going to them saying, this is what we want. What problems does that generate for you? What are the challenges you can do? How can we help you? So we're actually helping to build that supply chain by, you know, engaging with them in a completely different way. So that's what we're trying to do. Sounds simple. It isn't. It's getting, uh, but, you know, it needed that kind of naivety of um, kind of expression that a community-led organisation can. We can come to terms of, right, these things are really important to us. These are our values. And um, well, let's just follow those values to their logical conclusion. And through that, we've generated a momentum behind a new organisation. We've supported, we've generated funding from government and other organisations to do this. And we've now got a supply chain standing behind us. So we very much hope that in, in, in the early part of this summer, we'll have a new outline planning application in that process. And we will be funded by, we'll have some additional funding from Horizon 2020, a European funder, grabbing the last bit of Europe whilst we can um, to take us through this process and be on site next year. So that's where we are, that's Peck Homes. And I'd be very happy to take any questions.